Welcome to Mike's Motor Works, and today we got a couple of big things going on with our big stroker motor. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get those cam bearings installed. We're going to check the uh, cam itself to make sure that the bushings are set right, the lifters work together and what have you. So we're checking the lift on that. Then we're going to install all of our plugs, all of our uh, crank bearings, and we're going to also give a quick check on our bearing tolerances to make sure that we're within those tolerance ratings and to make sure there's no clearance issues. You don't want to miss it. It's all right now here on Mike's Motor Works. <laughs> So not a lot has changed other than a fresh coat of Chrysler Blue. Um, this isn't anything fancy here. We decided not to film this because this is nothing more than uh, rattle can paint. It wasn't like we did on our other episodes. If you want to know how we uh, painted the other motors that we've done in the past, I highly recommend that you check out those other episodes. But as you can see here, we got our essential areas um, painted up and we are ready to do several things here. We got some plugs that we're going to go ahead and install. And as you can see here, if I look down inside the motor, you can see where those um, bushings sit. And of course, you also get a good look at the um, uh, journals and the saddles there for the uh, crank itself. So let's go ahead and get things started by first getting the cam bearings in. So what we have here in place, or close to in place, is a cam bearing install tool. We picked this up from Summit Racing. And uh, yeah, kind of a neat uh, opportunity to get a tool that we haven't used in before or don't have in our um, variety and assortment of tools. And what we've done is we've gone ahead and pre-drilled a basic guide hole to give us a reference point. Now this hole is smaller than what comes from the factory and the reason that is because we are going to be using solid roller lifters here so they don't require as much oil flow as say a traditional hydraulic lifter and so uh, we've already pre-drilled the um, bearings, the cam bearings to um, uh, have smaller holes in key places and this helps us make sure that those holes are aligned and put in place. So uh, all we got to do then is align hole with hole and we are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and let Pop whack that in. using is a ball peen hammer on the end there to drive that into place. Pop was saying there, he said it's going to come right to the edge because it's a perfect size, directly designed for the hole. For those who are watching this at home who maybe haven't done something like this before, what are you checking for and how do you know that it's all the way in? If you look at the edge here and the edge on the other side, they're both exactly the same width apart. Once the edges line up, they line up front and rear. All right. And it's in place. So basically what you're saying, if I can't show this with my finger, but basically if you're looking for the edge down here, my finger is, and then you're looking to make sure that this front edge matches with the rear edge, 
back in the back to make sure they're from the same distance and flush. And of course you can't see that because the uh, pieces are in the way there. You can kind of sort of see it down that way. Alrighty. And that's how you basically know. So we're going to do this one, two, three, four more times. So something important to note too, we went ahead and marked where the point was, where the um, oiling uh, port or the oiling galley is on each of the uh, bearing holes. So those are marked with a uh, silver sharpie so that they contrast with the iron itself so that we can clearly see where those holes are so we can get that newly drilled hole uh, aligned in the proper position. This assembly is the, uh, well, the, basically the business end of the cam bearing installation tool. Um, up towards the front of the shaft here, you have like a little plastic cone which acts as a guide to make sure that the device is going in straight. This is the bearing itself. I'm going to explain more about that in just a second. Now these here are kind of like little uh, expander tools that hold that bearing in place as you're driving that into the hole itself and of course these here act as a backing to help that driving process of course as this is tightened down these little things spread out kind of like if you ever used an exhaust tool where they expand out um, it's kind of the same premise like a, like a little reamer type deal right so um, yeah you basically drive this into place using the hammer now as far as the holes here we did not drill these okay uh, this came from the factory these are from Clevite there are three holes in this bearing, and then inside the, um, uh, the journal itself, there are uh, two holes, right? And we're just going to make sure that those are aligned. Um, now, we did change the hole size for this one, this one, and that one, the one, three, and the five. But the two and four do not get changed because we're dealing with hydraulic lifters. Um, and we were told by various professionals, hey, don't worry about that. We did our consultation work and they said, make sure that the ports are smaller that allow the oil to feed other places that are more vital. When you install these, you're going to be working from the back of the engine frontwards because there's slight variances in the size of the bearings. In other words, the one up front is going to be your smaller one. Then it's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, right? That way they all fit into place, right? So that's when you install them, they have to be done in order. If they're not in order, well, you're going to be a little lost. As you can see here, we have a slight, you can see the shiny metal here, there is a slight lift. If you rub it with your finger, you can kind of feel it, right? And if you do the same one over here, you can feel the same thing. So we, are no, we know that we are in a good spot. And we didn't go too far because clearly when you look at the top of the uh, journal up this way, right? Um, it's actually, so you're seeing the iron. So yeah, we're in a good spot. We are definitely lined in the middle. We double checked our holes and we are confident we're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and that takes care of number one and number two. So we're gonna take care of three, four, and five. All right, as you can see here, a hole is a little bit smaller than the one we just put in on this one right here. You saw that pass by. Uh, if you can't see that on camera, that's right where my finger is at. And um, yeah, we're gonna make sure that course that's aligned and uh, we're gonna get this into place. And we're gonna go ahead and speed the footage up um, while this goes in for y'all.
again, using the eyeball test here, um, we can see that we are definitely in the center of those um, uh, little saddles, journals, what have you. And then, of course, using the finger test. So we're confident we got that installed correctly. The hole lines up. And so we're going to go ahead and take care of the other ones. Now, note what's a little different than this time around. Uh, here, the handle is a little bit shorter because we're trying to do this as a one-person type deal. And so all we did was just simply um, use one part of that shaft, added a bolt on the end so that we can drive the bearing into place here. Making sure that our shaft has enough assembly lube on vital areas, we're going to go ahead and slide this into place. Now this isn't the full installation here. All we're doing right now is testing our um, cam lifters are going to work with the proper lift, make sure there's no oiling problems, etc. And we'll show you that and show you why here shortly. So again, we have it just lubed up enough to go ahead and get it into place so that we can make a couple turns with a couple of lifters make sure that we are good. Ooh. Butter. Again, we're making sure that there is assembly lube here. And uh, if you heard that expression of ooh as it went in, there was a lot of joy on how well that fit in there. Or the cam fit in there itself. I got, I got it back to my fingers right here. Now, if you're looking at the cam itself, you can tell that these are close to peak here and there. So we're going to give these full turns. We're going to check the top dead center for each one and the bottom dead center on each one to make sure that there's no spot for an internal oil leak. Now, I'm simply holding this cam up with my fingers in the back. There's no plug in the back just yet because we wanted to make this sure this test was done first. So I'm just going to keep my fingers as a guide to make sure that they are staying in the middle of the lobes there. Now notice what we're doing here, we're just simply turning them and keeping just simple finger pressure on each cam. I think we're good. And what we're checking for is at the top of each one, we were just past the top dead center here, we were making sure that the um, um, internal lobes did not come out of the uh, um, bushing. And we're doing the same thing here to make sure there's good clearance all the way around. And we're also checking the bottom of each one to make sure that the um, gap in each lifter isn't showing through. Ah, yeah. All right. See, so there's no problems. We're also checking the brass up here to make sure it's not hitting in its full down position. Um, you got one we can show what we're talking about? Basically, what we were looking for, if I'm just going to put this right here, right, this right here is where it holds the oil inside, right? It's a solid roller lifter, so there's no oil pumping through, right? This will get lubed automatically from the oil that's feeding the cam itself, right? So what we're checking is, one, on its bottom dead center, that this part isn't seen here, right? And the top dead center, this isn't seen here. Additionally, in bottom dead center, we want to make sure that the um, retaining bar right here doesn't tap on the lifter itself. Do we need to check each one? Okay. Even with the differences and variances in the casting? Right. Exactly. Well, we, we seated the brass against the uh, iron. Okay. All right. Now, one of the things that we did was we went ahead and put the brass, the bottoms of the brass, right? against the casting itself of the block. So there shouldn't be any issues there. But if you've driven yours a little bit further than we've driven ours, this gives you a chance to check that. And again, we're pretty good on our clearance here. I'm sorry, I can see it on camera. On our clearance there. You confident with it? All right. And you sure you don't want to check any of the other ones? Do one or two more just to get check the variance. Maybe this one on the bottom. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. It looks like it's already been, yeah, they had some grounding work here done anyways. Again, we're checking that problem hole that we had. Again, we're checking to make sure that we're good here. Bottom dead center, we're not seeing that um, bottom end of that um, lifter show through. And we're gonna go all the way up. Top dead center for each one. Good fluid movement. And we're good and clear. And the cycle's down. Now obviously there's going to be a whole lot more pressure than what our fingers and hands are providing on these things as 500 foot-pounds 500 foot -pounds of torque with each spring. Woo. All right, and we're feeling confident with our test. So that means that we are good here. We're going to go ahead and remove our cam, uh, give it a quick uh, clean up, and then head on to take care of the... Uh, various oiling plugs and freeze plugs and then we'll get to our um, crank fitting and uh, bearing tolerances.